Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Develop with Maven in Eclipse. Today I'm going to talk about dependency management in Eclipse and show you what a great job Maven actually does in managing our dependencies in the background. So let's assume that we have a little Maven project set up like I showed you in previous episodes and I'm currently writing a URL processor that has a single process method and gets in some URL it wants to work on and the first thing I want to check here is whether this URL is uh, either null or empty string um, because this is an illegal input and I want to throw an illegal argument exception in that case uh, saying that uh, no URL was provided and since I don't like these kind of checks and I know there's Apache Commons with a string utils uh, helper class that defines some things like is empty check that is not safe, uh, I want to use Apache Commons as a dependency of my project. So since I'm using Maven, I want to use Maven's dependency mechanism to resolve this dependency for me. So what I usually do is go to browser and type something like maven apache commons and uh, then I go down here and I happen to know that the string utils class is actually in the lang uh, sub project of apache commons so I go to the lang page and uh, what, what springs to my eyes is uh, this little xml like code down here actually it says maven central so I already know this is the information I need to specify the dependency. So it's org Apache Commons as a group ID, Commons lang3 as an artifact ID, and the current version is 3.3.2. And it's apparently available, available from the central Maven repository, which is quite nice, because everything that's in the central Maven repository, we can resolve without any further configuration, because Maven Central is like the default repository for Maven. So... Since I don't want to manipulate the XML uh, POM file on my own, I'm going to use the search mechanism in Eclipse to add the dependency to my project. So I open the POM file, I go to dependencies and I say add, then I'm going to search for org Apache common, and then I already get a list uh, which contains all the Apache Commons projects one of which is actually the length 3 we've seen before was in 332 as we've seen and then we actually have to select only the scope of this dependency let's talk a little about this scope default scope for dependencies is the compile scope compile means that this dependency is going to be there when you compile your project and it's going to be there on the class path when you run your project later on then you have the provided scope. Provided scope is a dependency that you need for compilation, but you assume that it's going to be provided by either the JDK or a container you're running in later. Then we actually have runtime dependencies. Runtime dependencies are kind of the other way around. You don't need these for compilation, but you need these at runtime. That's like, for example, an implementation of the JDBC interfaces for MySQL database uh, which you don't compile against, but you need them for your application to run later on. Then you have the test scope for dependencies, which is for all the stuff that needs to be included uh, while test execution takes place. For example, the JUnit dependencies on the test scope, as you can see up here. So these dependencies are not going to be included when you ship your application, but they are included while you execute your tests. And then the last thing, the system uh, is probably something you're not going to need very soon, uh, this is a way to specify an explicit dependency, like with an explicit jar file. Um, I've never used this before, so I cannot tell you much about it. Okay, so since for our uh, commons lang we want to include it uh, both at compile time and when we ship our project, I'm going to stay with the default compile scope and click OK here to add the dependency. I save the POM file, and as you can see here in the Maven dependency container, the commons lang332 jar file has been added so we have the dependency already set up in a project. So now I can easily replace this check I did manually here with the is empty check from the Apache commons 
and you can see from the import here we're actually using the string utils class we just imported. Quite nice, huh? Okay, now let's talk about what Maven actually does for us in the background. I'm going to execute a Maven build to show you how many dependencies Maven actually manages for us to get the build running. So let's get this done. Right click, run as Maven, let's execute it as tests. Every single downloading downloaded pair here is one dependency, one jar file that Maven resolves for us in order to get the build running. You see this going on quite a lot. Admittedly, most of those are internal Maven dependencies. Maven needs to actually configure your build, to resolve the dependencies, to execute the tests, to compile the resources and so on and so forth. But imagine you would have to manage all these dependencies and all these jar files by hand. It would probably not be done by tomorrow. And how much time took it now for me to set this up? Like five minutes? Another nice thing about this is that when you actually re-execute the same build later on, you see there's no downloading going on at all. What happened in the background is that Maven cached all your dependencies in a local repository which is placed on your home folder under .m2 slash repository. That's true for both uh, Linux based systems and Windows as far as I know. And it's resolving those dependencies from there instead of downloading them again. So in fact when you uh, run your build once you can rebuild your whole system even offline without Maven having to download anything from anywhere. Okay, I think this is the most important stuff about dependency management in Maven. If you have any questions, drop me a comment. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any critique or feedback, just send me a message, drop me a comment, let me know. I'm always happy to improve on your feedback. Anyways, thanks for watching. That's it for today. Hope to see you next time.